Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Kiwi Lads channel. In this video, I'll be letting you know the Springbok squad for the upcoming Rugby Championship 2022. But if you do enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Nonetheless, let's get straight into the squad. So the Springboks have very recently announced their squad for the Rugby Championship. One massive player is out, but two massive players come back in with a combined experience of over 130 caps. These two men coming in certainly know how to win games for the Springboks. And we will have to wait and see how these two go up against the All Blacks for the first game of the Rugby Championship. But looking through, we will start with the props. They are going to be as follows. They have gone Thomas Detoy, Stephen Kitsoff, Vincent Cock, who has recently signed a deal with the Wasps from the Saracens team that he was at for the Gallagher Premiership. Then Franz Malharba, Ntutuku Machunu, Oxnashe and Trevor Nakanya. So plenty of talent there across the props. I would assume they'll go with a similar tactic to what they did up against Wales, which involves having Stephen Kitsoff coming off the bench as part of the bomb squad, but he is certainly dangerous alongside quite a few of these other props for South Africa. Now looking through at the hookers, unchanged from the Welsh tour, it is Joseph Dweber, Malcolm Marks, and Bongi Onbanambi. Now Bongi Onbanambi more than likely will be starting the matches up against the All Blacks with the super sub Malcolm Marks coming off the bench. That man just keeps on scoring tries. His accurate line-out could be a key for the box as well. Now looking at the locks, Ludiaga is there. The recent Centurion continues to be in the squad. That is Ebenezer And he has been playing very well throughout that Welsh tour. So he'll be looking forward to going head to head with a couple of the All Blacks. Although the thing is, we would have thought normally it would be Ebenezer Beef versus Brody Retallick. But with Retallick out, it does mean that instead he'll come up against a couple names that he hasn't faced too much in the past, such as Tupava'ai, Patrick Tuipalotu, but Sam Whitelock and Scott Barrett, the Crusaders, will still be there for the lock. So Ebenezer Beef. He will certainly dig his heels in and make it a tough contest in South Africa. Their next name, Salman Morat, who didn't really get too many opportunities other than that second test match up against Wales. Ruan Nokia is the next name in the locks. And then the last name, it is Marvin Ori. He does play for the DHL Stormers throughout the URC, the defending champs. And now looking at loose forwards, they are stacked with talent when it comes to these three positions. First of all, Peter Steftatoy. Going to be absolutely brilliant to see him go head to head with New Zealand, Australia and Argentina, then Sia Khaleesi, he will be captain for a majority of this rugby championship. Heinrich Lowe of the Vodacom Bulls keeps his spot in the squad, and the reason I say keeps his spot is because there is a Bulls player who has missed out, that is Marcel Kurtz he has been released back to the Bulls, so unfortunately will not be a part of the Springbok squad for the rugby championship. That is unless, of course, there are a whole heap of injuries in that loose void chair. They still have the utility forwards though, the Springboks, so I think they will be all right with the squad that they've gone with. There are 41 men available for the Springboks throughout this rugby championship where they will be playing six games with the first two being up against New Zealand. Like I mentioned, next name, Evan Roas, the youngster for the DHL Storm is the player player of the year in the URC. He is dangerous. He's only had one opportunity for the Springboks, but I know as soon as he gets more, He's certainly going to be able to cause an impact. Quaka Smith, a man who came off the bench a majority of the time in the tour up against Wales. Jesper Vesey did start a majority of the matches, but this next name, the return. He's back from his surgery, Dwayne Vermeulen. And the big question I have is whether or not he takes that starting number eight jersey from Jesper Vesey or whether or not they decide to maybe have Dwayne Vermeulen come off the bench and add just a little bit more firepower and experience later on in the matches. Now, I mentioned the amount of loose forwards that the Springboks have. Utility forwards, they've got Ryan Arrelstrat, Dion Fori, and then Franco Mostert. Now, Mostert, last time we saw him in the rugby championship, he did actually slot into lock quite a bit throughout that series. So whether or not that happens again is something that they could go with if they do need it. Although with Ludiaga and Emanetsebeth in your starting lineup, normally you're pretty safe, I would think, overall. But Mostert, he's a class player, and I'm looking forward to see him what he does throughout the rugby championship. Now looking at the back scrum halves, they have got four here for the Springboks. Fuff de Klerk did get to start that first match up against Wales, then did come off the bench in the third, so whether or not he starts is still to be confirmed. Then it is Jaden Hendricks, a man who did actually get to start that second and third test match, then Herschel Yankees, and then the last name, Grant Williams. He didn't get much of a run up against Wales, so hopefully he does get some time throughout the next few matches. The fly halves, Elton Yankees, a man who after that first match up against Wales was one of the least popular men in South Africa after the kicking performance that he had in that contest, but hopefully he has improved from that game and he will be hoping to get some minutes throughout this rugby championship. Then the other fly half option that the Springboks have got, it is Andre Pollard. He did seem to get better as the July internationals went on 
So you should be at a relatively high peak for these games of the Rugby Championship. And I should mention that the Springboks, they once again will be playing Australia in Australia somewhere that the Springboks, they did lose two games last year, but I think they will be firing big time for this year. And they will certainly want redemption. I think Andre Pollard's kicking could be one of the keys for them being able to get it. Now the midfield, Locanio Arm, Damien Dialende, so the stock standard combo for the Springboks in the midfield. Then also alongside them, it is Andre Esterhazen of the Harlequins, and then the last name there, Jesse Creel. And it will be interesting to see if they go with him in the centres, or maybe out on the wing with the injury of one of their wingers, which I will actually be segueing to now. Chisel and Colby, unfortunately out with a broken jaw. So it means once again, we miss out on seeing them go head to head with the All Blacks. We missed them last year for the Rugby Championship. We haven't seen it in quite some time. And sadly, that is the way it's going to continue. He will be back in September, but whether or not he can play up against Argentina, I believe for now, he is not going to be able to. But hopefully his jaw recovers quickly and he'll be back rearing a go for the Stormers that he has recently signed for in the URC. If their team wasn't strong enough already, they've now added Chisel and Colby out on the wing. That is a scary side for this year's URC competition. Then the outside backs, Warwick Galant, who recently signed for Racing 92, Willie LaRue, and then Maka Zolima Pimpi. They are the three outside backs that the Springboks have got. No upper Lele Fussy actually getting taken out of the Springboks side, which was an interesting choice, definitely because Chisel and Colby is now out with an injury. So I assume on one wing, Makazoli Mapimpi, and then maybe out on the other wing, you either go with Jesse Creel, like I mentioned, you could possibly go with maybe a Kurt Lea who is actually one of the utility backs in the Springbok side, and alongside him, it is Franz Stein making his way back in. A lot of experience for him. He's got lethal kicking off the tee. Can win the Springbox games. So we'll have to wait and see whether he has any magical moments in this one. Now, speaking of another Stein, Mornay Stein, unfortunately not going to be there for this tour as he did retire, but we know he will be back for the next British and Irish Lions tour. Then the last name on the list, it is Damien Valimza, who I felt played very well throughout the matches up against Wales. So I am keen to see what he can do in the Rugby Championship. But nonetheless, that is the Springbok side that they have gone with a 41-man squad. Do let me know what you think of it in the comments. Who would you have brought in? Who would you have taken out compared to the July Internationals? Do let me know, but thank you all very much for tuning in. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all for the next one.